Hello everyone, welcome back to V2E Sikshara program. Myself, Professor Nitin Kumar. So I am giving the lecture on mobile application development. In this lecture, I am going to cover the topic menus. So what is menus means? So there are two types of menus. One is optional menu, other one is context menu. So in this lecture, I am going to provide the optional menu. Just if you take an example of WhatsApp. So you can observe three dots which will appear on the right top corner. So if you click on those three dots, so where you can observe the settings such as about, settings, privacy settings, profile picture, means the features. So this is my WhatsApp application. So here we have a lot of the chat or status, whatever we want. But here we will be provided with three dots. Why? Because this features, if they make this feature to available in this activity screen, that in turn will occupy the more space. They don't want to hop the uh, UI, which is already there. Instead of that, they want that settings are the menus should appear in this dots. If a user clicks on this, it will open a drop down with lot of features like this. So once again, if a user clicks on those three dots, it will go back. That kind of thing is called menus. The main advantage of the menus is, so if you use menus, so it will avoid the usage of those features inside the activity screen. You can provide the menus by using the optional menu feature. So in this application, I will be demonstrating menu as well as spinner view. The next one is spinner view. Even it will work in the same manner. So what is the spinner view? If you want to list out the drop down, for example, I don't know how many of you are using Google form. So where if you want to restrict the user to select the choice, for example, if you want your college branches, so seven branches, CS, IS, Mechanical, in Civil, Electrical, Electronics, Industrial Production. So if you give that, the user has to select only seven branches which are there in that college. Means you are restricting the user to select only one, those seven options. In such cases, we are going to make use of spinner view. It is somewhat like Google form drop down options. So other than those seven buttons, seven choices, user cannot able to select any other. Okay, so those two things we are going to develop here. Firstly, I'm going to develop the optional menu where I'm going to select, where I'm going to develop a activity like this. So where it will not be having any design part. And please remember, with respect to optional menu creation, you are not going to disturb, you are not going to use design part. You are not going to use the design. So your the option menu will be created only by using Java. So one you can create by using a design, but it's better to create the optional menu by using a Java. Just the thing is you have to provide first, what's the first option? What's the second option? What's the third option? What's the fourth one? Just if you give that name, so whenever you click on that option, for example here, this is my WhatsApp application, these are the option menus. So if I open this option menus and if I click on uninstall, the uninstall will happen. The logic required for that execution of that particular task or for, for, for that particular option uh, logic. So if you place that inside that particular button, that will execute whenever you call it. Okay. So this is how you can design the op option menu. So here in this particular application, I'm going to develop the option menu by using a simple application. One, two, three. The option menu will be available here. So I'm not adding any logic here. Why? Because if I add logic, it will become more complex. Instead of that, so if a user cl clicks on this option menu, I will be given the option such as item 1 to item n. So if that particular user clicks on uh, uh, any item, the toast message will appear. This is my design requirement. I am not going to use no design for this particular application which I am going to develop with respect to option menu. Next, coming to the spinner view. So I'm going to divide, design an application like this. In this application, I'm going to provide a detail here to enter the branches with downward arrow. 
So this branches should be placed inside the strings and that should be referred in my Java part. So here also I am not going to use any uh, design part. Instead of that, the branches. For example, in Vidyavardhaka College of Engineering, we have totally seven branches. Those seven branch details will be placed inside the resource file in the form of a uh, string. So that string should be accessed whenever user clicks on this drop down. So those branches should appear like this here. CSC, IEC, ECE, Triple E, AIML, Civil, Mechanical. So the user can select only one option among this seven drop down. So if that's the scenario, if you want to restrict the user to enter the very legal, very accurate information without giving the wrong information, then we can make use of the spinner drop down and menus. This is what I am going to demonstrate in this demonstration. Let's start the demonstration now using Android Studio. Hello everyone. So in this demonstration, I will be demonstrating the usage of menus in Android application. So the menus is nothing but additional information or the additional options that are not directly visible in the main user interface of an application. So that will be present in the side corners for effective usage of additional options that you want to display to the user. So there are two types of menus that we will use. One is option menu, other one is context menu. So in this demonstration, I am going to demonstrate how to use the option menu that can be displayed whenever the user presses the menu button that is there in the corners. So displayed very according to the current activity that is running. The context menu that is displayed whenever the user taps on holds on an image or a page. So this menu will play an important role just if you have, uh, look at the uh, WhatsApp application. So where you can observe three dots in top right corner. If you click on those three dots, you will you can look into the options such as about profile picture settings, privacy settings. So the, if you want to display such kind of options to the user, then we have to make use of this menus. Let's start developing this menu. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate in this particular application. So I will open Android Studio. So it's a simple example where I'm going to demonstrate how to use the menus in the activity without wasting the space that is available in the screen. So just making use of uh, uh, the dots which are there on the right corner, we are going to create the menus. So the, I'm going to select the empty activity and please remember here with respect to menu creation, menu application, I'm not going to use any design. Okay, so we are not going to describe the design part, just we are going to develop the menu application. So using the Java part, finish. So my application is getting synchronized. Once the synchronization is done, I'm going to start developing the application, menu application development. So yeah, with respect to this menu application, so we are not going to uh, design this menus. So instead of that, we are going to create the menus using Java. So my application is ready. Just I'm going to change the title of this application. I'm not going to do anything other than that in the design. So in design part, we have already have the text view. I'm going to rename this. So I'm going to rename it as text demonstration of menus. And I'm going to change the size. Just I'm going to demonstrate how the menu is going to work in this particular application. So just I have added the title, nothing other than that I've done. So let's start the development. 
So firstly, I am going to create the menu. Why? Because that's the first primary thing. Before, so you make, uh, so menus is nothing but you are going to provide the options to the user. For that, firstly, we have to create the menu. So that's the primary thing. So I am going to create the menu by using a method private void create menu. So till now, how many methods you have displayed user defined methods for which you are going to use to provide the view. Here we have to provide the menu as an option. But because we are not going to use the view of the activity, instead of that we are going to use the menu feature that is there in the activity. That is nothing but top right corner to display these menus. So firstly, I will add the first item menu dot add. So it should appear in the first place. And you have to give the title. Item number, I am going to use the title as item number one. So I have added a menu to that the, where the i value, i1 value is 0, 0, 0. So that is, it's going to appear in the first place. Its name is item number one. Next, I'm going to add the second one. It comes in the first place. Its name is item number two. So like this, I'm going to add the five items which will be visible in the menus. How many menus which is required is here I am using the item name, item number as a name. So you, you can use any particular name that is required. So I have had a, just have created a simple private method by name create menu instead of using the view means we are not displaying this in the view or we are not displaying in this in the activity instead of that we are use, displaying it in the menu bar. So where I am adding the five items by name item number one, two, three, four, five. So as we are displaying only one set of items that's why the i value will remain the same just i1 and i2 value will change 0 0 0 1 1 2 2 3 3 and 3 4 4. So next I am going to write the separate method that is to check which item has been selected by the user that is private boolean menu choice menu choice. So it will be based on the menu item which has been selected. Item. So where I am going to make use of switch statement. So based on the selected item that particular switch case will work. Switch item based on the get item id firstly so as you know that the case label should be used firstly case 0 if you have selected the item number 1 so it should print a toast message that is toast dot make text context is this so selected item number one and you have to provide the length finally dot show. So whenever user clicks the item number one, 
it will print it will print in the form of a toast message the item one has been selected that will distribute that will be displayed for longer duration and return true similarly case number 1 case number 1 So once again, I'm going to print a post message. If the first item has been, if the second item has been selected by the user, this selected item two, and it should be displayed for longer duration of time and show. Return true. Just I'm placing the keys labels for the. list of items that i have used toast dot make text thus we have selected item 3 but because we are done with first two items this is my item number 3 and its duration and call the show and return to case label number 3 toast dot make text thus so you can add any other functionality just to make just to demonstrate how the menu option can be used i am using this toast message in place of this toast message you can use any other functionality which is required to be placed inside it so finally case number 4 so last toast message whenever the user clicks on this particular option so it has to print selected the last item that is item number 5 and that should appear for longer duration show and return true done so if a user selects any other value if the user has selected any other value means if it has not selected it should return false done clear so we have to provide the once in first method we have created the menu and we have provided the choice in second method we have provided the choice based on the id so we are using switch case the case labels represents the items which are placed in the menu so the lastly so the last step is to write the code to convert this into option menu so just on on create option menu that option is available here so we are going to use this overridden method on create option menu just observe we are not going to change anything that has been overridden just we are going to add two lines of code that is first one is to create the menu done return true so second one we are going to override on option item selected on auto option item selected so here in place of this we are going to return we are going to replace this with menu choice
two return statements are there that's why it was showing a suggestion done just so it's a only two steps procedure to create the menus in your application so firstly list out the items that should appear in your menu by adding those menu items so you can use any particular name that you want next provide the choice to the user so by making use of switch case label the where the case label must have the logic that you want to execute whenever that particular item has been selected so here i have used five items that's why i'm making use of five case labels i'm not placing any complex logic here so instead of that i am placing just a toast message whenever a user clicks on that particular item this toast message should be should appear in the output so once after that you have to override on create option menu so where you have to provide a method that you have used for the menu creation next once after that you have to override another method on option item selected so where you have to return the choice that item that has been selected by the user so just observe now we will look into that output how it looks so generally you are going to see this kind of options menus in uh, home screens with three dots on top right corner So we will synchronize our new dependencies with the Gradle script with our project so that we will not get any errors. Once the synchronization is done, I'm going to execute this and I'm going to demonstrate how the option menu is going to work. The synchronization is done. So I'm going to close this. So I'm going to execute this in the output emulator. You can see how the option menu will work. This is a very wonderful feature that is there in the Android Studio. So you can add any number of items which are required by your application. So without utilizing the activity space. Generally, if you want to provide any options, so if you make use of design, the activity space will be used. But in kind, this kind of menus, if you make use of this menu feature, the activity space will not be used. So whenever you want that, options you can click on those dots which are available on the right top corner and you can utilize those options so my application is executing and waiting for the target device to come online so that we can observe the output So when you want to see this kind of output in your normal mobiles without using the emulator, so you may connect your Android device to the laptop or the desktop on which you are developing the application and make sure that you will uh, enable the developer options. Then only you can observe the output. So my application is getting installed. So you can observe my application is ready for the demonstration. Just observe. So here you can observe the three dots which are available. So that's what we call options menu. So the menu has been not utilized in the activity screen. The menus is not disabled, dis displayed in the activity screen. Instead of that, we are going to make use of this menu bar. So just observe if I click on these three dots that the menu items are appearing here. So if I click on any particular item, the toast message should appear. So you have selected item number five. So you have selected item number one. So like this, this is one good example to make use of the menus in your applications.
without utilizing the activity space. So in the same example, I'm going to cover the next one that is spinner views. So where, so you are going to experience the same kind of menus like thing just by utilizing the spinner view. Once again, we are not going to utilize the design part. Instead of that, we are going to create a resources. That resources will be used in our, just I'm going to erase this code that we have created for the menus. And we are going to use the same application for the spinner view development. So the spinner view is nothing but a normal list type of view. So without using uh, so any features, any design features, you can develop this kind of spinner views. Just observe firstly, before using the spinner view, firstly, you have to create a resource cells. So that inside that resources you can have uh, new Android resource file. So you have to create a new Android resource file. So you have to give the name. So I'm going to give the name as resources only and I'm going to finish this. It leads to creation of a resources. Just observe it has created a file in the name of resources. Just have we are going to use this resources and I'm going to feed the details which are required firstly I'm going to add a string name so that is So application name I'm going to provide the application name that is just observe what's the application name that we are using here that is menu application. So next I'm going to provide the hurry string name string hurry name the array name that I'm going to use here is branches. Just I'm going to demonstrate the spinner view using the branches data, various branches that comes in the computer science. So I'm going to add the items one by one. Item, firstly I will add CSE. So computer science and engineering. I will add the complete name itself computer science next item information science next item mechanical engineer next item electronics next item civil engineering these are the options that i'm going to provide in the spinner view that i'm going to develop now just you have to create a separate resources so that it can be used in your code in your java part there is no need of adding these resources directly in the design or there is no need of creating anything other than this just you have to create a folder by selecting this option just observe right click on resources new android resources file inside that file you are going to add these details 
So once after adding these details, firstly add the application name and the array name that you are going to use and the items that is present in that array name. Here I am making use of uh, branches name for the demonstration purpose. So done. We are done with adding the resources. Next, let's start with the development. Firstly, I will declare the string. The string that I am going to use here is branches. Why? Because the items that I have added in the arrays, branches, that's what I am going to define here, branches. So next, I am going to get that branches data using get resources dot where that get string array or dot array dot branches that we have created. So next I'm going to call the spinner view spinner s1 is equal to find view by id or dot id dot spinner so this component is not there that's why i'm getting the error here so that's why i'm going to add the component here so i will make it as so I'll change the text associated with this one. Text. I'm going to make it as spinner view. So then I'm going to add that spinner view. Just observe. So I have added that spinner view here. Just set the cursors. So why? Because we are working with the constraint layout. Spinner. So go to that particular code part and just observe. So here we have added the spinner view and its ID is spinner. So now that error has been removed automatically. So now, so once after that, I'm going to call the array adopter. Why? Because my whole code works on the array adopter. Array adopter string reference is equal to new array adopter. And here we have to pass string and this keyword or dot layout dot support spinner simple drop down you have to select this and you have to pass the data that is branches where the array values are present done okay so just observe even if you miss this particular array name you are not going to get the output Why? because this is just so we are calling array adopter and we are giving the reference as adopter and its layout is simple spinner drop down item but which item should be dropped down that is branches this should be provided if you miss this so you're not going to get the output next so what's the reference that we are going to use for a spinner that is s1 s1 dot dot set adopter so where you have to call that adopter that we have created in the previous step next s1 that is spinner reference s1 dot set on item selected listener so which item has been selected that should be that for that we are going to add the listener that is new 
adapter item selected listener i am going to add for for every individual item that you are going to select for which i am going to add the listener so it is automatically provided this many this is overrided classes for this i am going to fill the details which is i am going to customize as per my requirement that is so we have added the listener so once after that down item selected so firstly this is argument zero this is argument zero next one argument one why because we are passing the arguments here argument one int argument two next long argument three these are the arguments that we are passing so next i have to declare the index so it is based on the argument zero i have to select the index is equal to argument zero dot get the selected item position means i am recording the position of the item because just observe it is all correlated firstly i am declaring the branches so then i am adding that branches i am uh, i am declaring the branches in the form of a separate external resource then i am adding uh, uh, that particular external resources to the array that i am declaring here in the form of branch next i am calling a spinner view then i am providing the spinner view with that array list then i am calling the adopter so once the item is selected i am adding the item selected listener for that i am passing the arguments so in that argument the first argument will be the position of the item selected once the position of item is selected i am going to print that in the form of a toast message toast dot make text get application context get application context so i am going to print the selected item and i'm going to concatenate with the index of that array that is branches index value then and i'm going to make it to print for longer duration of time and i'm going to call show method show so the toast message will be applicable on this application so it is going to print the selected item plus the branch which is which is going to you are going to select in that array that we have created so it will be displayed for longer duration of time and it will be ended so finally so if nothing is selected for this i am not going to add any anything why because if anything is not selected i don't want any functionality for this one so this completes this particular application for spinner view development so just it's a very simple application so where firstly you have to create a external source resource file so where you have to add the various items that should be appeared in the spinner view so once after creating this external string file in the resources so firstly declare the string that you want in your program so next get that string attached to the resources file that you have created then call the spinner view that should be added in your design and call the ad array adopter and pass that array then set the adopter and finally once the item get selected add the listener with four arguments so in that the first argument will be the position of the item selected print that item which item has been selected based on the index value present in that array in the form of a toast message so just let's look how it works so we will execute this how the spinner drop down is going to work let's see the output
so it is creating a duplicate values delete this so now I'm going to execute so just a resource folder has been duplicated just have deleted the, the duplicated resource file mm. file so let's see the output how this spinner view is going to work So waiting for target device to come online my application is getting installed just observe so you can observe the spinner drop down view so once you select any particular the toast message will appear this is a very simple example to demonstrate the spinner view this is also somewhat like menu option so where the user the particular view that you want to display will not occupy the activity screen instead of that it will be hidden so you can use this arrow to open that options so that's all about the option menus that we can use in our android application development Thank you.